Okay, today we're going to be working with an elk cape that was commercially tanned and basically what we're going to do is go through, we're going to prep the ears, get those turned inside out. We will be using research mannequin ear liners today. We're gonna to go through and basically go through a thinning process. Every bit of this cape is gonna be thin. The eye area, the nostril, the nose pad, the mouth area, this is the time you wanna go through and do any of the repair work. So it starts with an evaluation of what you got to deal with. So we'll start with that. The next area that we're gonna concentrate on in the eyes is thinning the eyelids down and what we're going to do is take the oil glands one of the first things we're going to do is take the oil glands out of the eyelid and the area that it's going to be found is right under this area right here where the brown meets the the lighter portion of the inner eye skin it's very critical that we remove these oil glands if you look in this area right here there's a tremendous amount of oil in this area that needs to come out. Those oil glands have got to be removed and shaved thin. If you don't remove those oil glands, the problem is that when you tuck that skin down around that clay, that oil will cause that eyelid to contort and change as it dries. If you take a good close look right here, all of these oil glands have been removed and last but not least we will go through and thin that eyelid down to approximately a quarter inch okay we've got the ears inverted uh, we're going to go along and we're going to take a a nice sharp blade and we're going to get these edges of these ears turned all the way out uh, what we're going to do is we're going to turn this all the way out to the edge on both uh, sides top and bottom of that ear and then we're going to remove this cartilage making a perforation across the back through the cartilage remove the top piece and then the bottom piece. We've got this cartilage separated along the back and using a tremendous amount of water as we peel this off we want to continually take and spray this down that will ease us taking it all the way down to the very end to separate that off and save that we'll try to keep that fairly moist we'll use that as a comparison for when we're test fitting this to the ear liners that we're going to use. We're going to take a Dremel with a drill bit and we're going to come in through the outside we're going to get our basic shape of the inside of that nostril passage and then we're going to come in through the back and dremel a spot where we will actually be installing this elk septum available from research mannequins in through the back but the first step is always to go in and dremel the uh, outer shape of the nostril Now as we trace this septum in on the back, the darker areas that we're removing, bear in mind that this curve right here and this curve right here is the back of the inner nostril wing, which is right here. Outer nostril wing, inner nostril wing. This continues back to this right here, so don't get too aggressive with that Dremel as you're coming in through the backside. Got both of our <clears throat> nasal passages cleared. Last thing we'll do is remove the area where the septum is gonna go in. Okay, we've got the septum passage completely cleared out, but our septum's ready to glue in and install back onto the mannequin. Now we're to the point where we're ready to set the eyes, and this is probably one of the most critical parts of the mount. 32 millimeter eye, you want to kind of just do a test fit in there to make sure that it's going to set up or set in there nice and square, which it sits perfectly flush against there, has a good depth to it. What I like to do is come in with a little bit of critter clay, and I will take and run that just about flush with the back of that eye to where I've got just a little bit left over. Double check it to make sure that it's level with the ground, which is what my black marks are for. And these are sitting at about a 45 degree angle with a slight 10 or 11 degree cant downwards. In addition to my reference photo albums, I like to take an eye setting graph, line this up on the mannequin, 
just to make sure that the depth of my eyes is the same from one side to another. Now prior to pulling this on the mannequin, what we want to do is make sure we pull this skin back past the ear liner approximately an inch and a half to two inches and then we're going to feather potter's clay in for our ear butt. Now bear in mind our ear butt can be no wider than the widest part of the ear. So we'll pull that back and we'll take our potter's clay and we'll wrap it around our ear liner and then prior to pulling that skin back over We're going to smooth it out just a little bit and hit it with some hide paste. And then invert that skin. What you want to have is a good smooth transition from the clay to the ear liner. The, the mastoid portion of the neck, that ear butt has to stay in front of that. And when that ear goes into an ear back position, it is going to snug right up to those horns. So that ear butt's going to lay in front of the mastoid, between the mastoid and the base of those horns. Now that we've got this thing mounted, it's time to get to work on adjusting some of the hair patterns that are on here. Uh, if you take a look at this reference photo and use your reference albums, we've got a number of different tools that we're going to use. A straight comb, a slicker brush, uh, for lack of a better explanation, I guess it's a barbecue cleaning brush. Uh, this works extremely well for the hair patterns on the face. And as we look at the photo of this bugling elk, you can actually see that there's definitely a line right at the back of the head in front of that mastoid. And the hair pattern actually comes forward and down the neck, down the back of the, or top of the, the neck and up on the shoulder area the center portion of that hair is actually standing straight up. Use those references as a guide. You can study these and figure out your hair patterns. Uh, the first thing we want to do is make sure that we take the amount of hide paste that was in the center of this forehead. We want to take and work that hide paste back at this point. And you can feel it squeezing back. And we're going to work that right back onto those stitches. And over the next several days, what we'll do is adjust adjust the skin, adjust the shape of the eyes. On the side of the pedicles, you want to make sure that you get in there and groom it. If you groom it properly and your skin is adjusted, you should have a, a tuft of hair or a line of hair that's right along the side of that thing. But it's a matter of going over the entire mount, adjusting everything, pulling any of the air that might be in there out, and adjusting hair patterns, adjusting everything as it dries. Once we get this entire mount dry, I like to back comb this area on the mane. You can do it with a air hose, you can do it with a comb, you can use a rake. And that's your garden household variety rake. You want to use what's called a, a dog rake. This one's well used, got a few teeth missing, but I'll actually get in that mane and back comb it and get some loft to it because once you start getting a little off, that's when that animal starts to look a little more alive. It comes around the corner of that mouth. It should curl around the corner of that mouth and experiment a little bit with it. Comb it different directions until you can figure out the lay of that hair. In addition, I like to take a pretty good volume of air, at least 100 pounds of pressure, and blow it onto these ears. You can even take and back comb that to get some of the loft put back in that ear. Most of my back, back combing and grooming will come after this thing is completely dry, but you can do a lot of adjustments to this at this point. 